Uh, guys did a heck of a job, but they do a heck of a job for every practice since uh, since I've been here. So that's not like something new. Uh, very excited about, uh, about how hard they work. Um, probably one of the most rewarding times I've ever had in my 34 years of co coaching. If I can talk coaching Division One football, uh, is this group of men. It's probably as fun a group as I've ever coached in my life. Is just because, and then that's the that's the being with the, the staff, and obviously all stems from what a great job Coach Joseph's doing. But they're just a great bunch of guys to to coach. They bust their tails. They work at the game plan, all those things. So really excited about that. So we're off and running. Like I said, we've had two really good days. We've got a lot of days to go. Uh, that we got to get ourselves woke up fast, able to play Saturday morning, but we'll be able to do that. So fire away. Uh, a lot of similarities. Obviously, just their you know uh, their main objective is, is is the same. They want to be able to stay ahead of the sticks. They want to be able to run the football. Um, they're uh, you know a heavily base zone team with a lot of different looks how they get to it. You know they'll do it out of uh, you know with the tight end detached, tight end attached, twelve personnel. A lot of different looks like that. So they change the surface a lot in their run game, and uh, and they they're, they're extremely extremely gifted up front O line and obviously. You know, one of the most elite backs probably that I've ever had to coach against in Mo Abraham. I mean, he's an unbelievable player. He's, he's, he's tough, physical, able, ability to jump cut. He has everything. So hands are full in that area, that's for sure. But, but a lot of similarities. Is there a cumulative effect when you face one team after the next that likes to run the ball as much as Illinois, Minnesota, Wisconsin, you know, sort of Michigan, Wisconsin? Yeah. Want to do I, I, I think it's good for us. I mean, in, in the end, it, it, it's hard, like I said, uh, Defenses change so much when you play different teams. Like this team is a completely different team than Indiana. Indiana ran it, but it was in a different method that they did it. And uh, you know, Rutgers was completely different with how that they did it. So there is some similarities there. So it does help with that. You know, if all sometimes you're facing a team that's uh, you know that's a you know a Mike Leach type team, and then all of a sudden you're playing this team. That's a big difference from week to week. So there is some carryover that our guys are using to their advantage have themselves ready to go. But like I said, they're extremely, extremely well coached and uh, have a very, very good plan. of. Uh, and what they do really good is also is they just don't have themselves in bad third down situations. You know, when you go through the tape and stuff, you're just, they're just not third and longs. And they just do a good job of managing that. So that's a lot of work to get her. So you have, you have to earn the right to be able to, to try to get them to throw the ball. It's still in their package like that. We use the word T. We'll say 13 T. Or something that means extra tackle in the game. So they do that. Not quite as much as what they have in the past, but they have that ability uh, to do that. They've also in the past had the ability to do a lot of wildcat. They haven't done as much of that this year, but um, we're, we're sure preparing for that uh, because they have that in their DNA. That's for sure. Is there a carryover with the situation at quarterback with the defense? Like, is it more pressure to elevate their level? Of uh, no, not at all. I mean, those guys, uh, we got great offensive coaches and really good players over there, great players over there. So that's the least of our concerns as far as that, hey, we need to do something special because there was an injury during the game. We have to just be able to do our, our, our part, do our, do, do our part, our, our one-third that we have to be able to get done. So there's no conversations about that whatsoever. Uh, it's just do your job and get ourselves off the field. You know, we got ourselves off the field a lot on, on Saturday, but uh, but could have been better, obviously. Uh, to be able to give our offense more chances right there, and and you know, we forced one turnover, and that's just that's just not good enough football. We have to be able to do a lot better job with that. In what way has uh, Ernest come along these last few weeks? Well, there's two things that come out in that game uh, with with Ernest Houseman is that there was never a time after the game that you said like, well, the issue was Nick Heinrichs was out. That means Ernest played very well, and so especially for a true freshman. But he didn't walk off the field at any time. Being that was our that was our, our nemesis. That wasn't the case. So, a it starts with a couple things. One, the young man, and how he's prepared himself, and how different he is. And I think his first start was against Oklahoma. A lot of things were going on. A lot of stuff. True freshman. That's a lot different than you know than playing uh, North Star and playing Oklahoma. That's a, that's a different game. And so, um, there's a lot of different things for it. So he did a very good job with that. Also, a lot of credit goes to his coach, Coach Rue. Uh, to get a true freshman ready to go and play in that type of game, which, you know, your main adjustment was your chin strap, you know, type of thing. 
And so great uh, on both of their parts, Coach Rood and, and Ernest uh, deserve a lot of credit for how they've handled themselves and be able to get things done right there. So we're expecting a big week out of him again. He's, he's starting to mature, and he's played a lot now. He's really not a freshman anymore, but uh, very proud of him. Bill, I know you still have your eye on special teams. On that blocked extra point, what, what went wrong? I mean, what, how would you? Uh, I'll be honest with you. I've spent some time with Joey. And I, I, I don't delve on that a lot. I, I really don't. I don't delve on that a lot. I sit in with, with uh, Coach Connors and those guys. I know this is what I do know is that I can feel confident about is that we have a uh, protection meeting every, every Friday morning at 8 o'clock to cover everything very closely. And so with that phase right there, it was just a basically a technique error that's got to be able to be corrected. Uh, we feel our kicker is kicking very well right now. Timmy's kicking the ball very well. And so we want to be able to get protected and give him a shot for us right there. So it's something we'll keep working on very hard. What do you see when I think he came in with like Glenn Mason's first recruiting class, is what it seems like. And he's been there forever. Um, really, really talented young man. Uh, the thing that stands out the most probably is how tough he is. I've seen him take some shots and do it the sixth year of football, that's hard. If I'm corrected, I don't, I don't know if this for sure, but I think he's played in five games against Nebraska, right? This will, this will be his fifth game against Nebraska. So, But everything that I've seen from him, like I said, my first time obviously being on defense here and coordinating here is just very, very mature. Nothing rattles him. Uh, he understands very well how, how his offensive line operates and how good his running back is. So that helps him. I think it helps him a lot anytime you have such a talented tight end also uh, with Spanford. I mean... He's as good a tight end as we've seen all year. His size and and how he can how he can block and catch. So he's got some pieces that I think really helps uh, uh, Tanner Morgan out because he has those pieces around him and, and a good offensive line and a run game. But he's able to make all the throws. He can do all the things. He's very mature. So they also will do a lot of you know lookovers or check with me's. And he always has. Well, they're they're always in the right play. You just don't see him be like, oh man, we screwed that one up. He doesn't screw it up, so we got to build. We got to build to outplay him in that. In that, we will not build to like you're not going to out scheme him or trick him. Uh, so he's very gifted in that area, and, and look forward to playing for him. It's just fun to play against good players. Do you have one of his better games Saturday, and how he's where's he at now? When he started this season as a first, you know, first year starter back there at safety. Mm -hmm. I think uh, he had he had a, uh, youth had a very good game for us. And I also feel that the one thing where it's been a major improvement with, along with Buford has been far more tackling. I, you know, he had a missed, one missed tackle, which would have been, a, would have been probably been like by 10% of people in the country could have made the tackle on that particular one. But he is really throwing his face in there, on the, and Buford does it all the time too. So those guys are also in the run fits. Uh, Buford has to cover a little bit more than the rest of them do. Uh, but they're just a, they're two mature safeties that are handling things very well. Right now, we haven't really been substituting them very much. Their communication is really, really good. They talk the game all the time with what's going on. They're in here extra all the time, so that's really impressive. I'm just so lucky to have a chance to coach both of them. So I'm excited about them with where they're going, and you know they'll basically be out there every snap again that they can be out there on, on Saturday. But and then and also with Buford is that he's very healthy right now. I tell you, we got banged up against Purdue, uh, tried to out tough it, but uh, he's doing really well for us in that spot. So very happy with, with, with those guys. Always room for improvement. We're always we're always striving on some things. But I know this, they're putting the work in. So when you're putting the work in like they're putting the work in, it makes me proud to be around them. All right, thanks guys. Appreciate you. You bet.